Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Northeast Wisconsin Signature Event. Checking in with 6219B Rock'em Sock'em Robot. Currently ranked number two as we're on our final break before the end of quals. So looking really good so far. We talked about a lot of great stuff on this robot. Starting out actually and how they're approaching some of their match strategy, including doing live scoring and making sure that they are always on top of things. I just watched their last match and they had a huge upset in the match and that was a big part of it as well too. We're also going to be talking about as we go through the robots, some of the great wire management doing. This is definitely one of the best packaged robots I've seen so far in high stakes so we talked about that packaging their wire management that sort of thing and then talking about more about their sensors and how they're implementing them in the robot and one other thing i want you to focus on they actually did attempt to do a tier three climb you don't see it on the robot we'll be talking more about why it didn't work and how they're maybe looking at implementing that in the future so let's talk more about them coming up here on pits and parts this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following the Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Drill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. Jace, let's talk about uh, matches a bit more. As I mentioned, we uh, saw you. You had a huge match just earlier, and part of that, uh, as we'll talk about match strategy, is also doing the live scoring in the match too. So let's talk me more about that whole process. Okay, so yeah, this season, we kind of figured out that with all the moving parts and like being able to de-score mobile goals, it's really hard to like know what you have to do to win. So live scoring is kind of our um, solution to being able to solve that. So with live scoring, I will be sitting there um, scoring the match live and allowing it to, allowing us to change our game strategy how it goes. So if like in our last match, the really big upset, we realized we were down by one point and either needed to de-score a mobile goal or score a wall stake. So we communicated with that with our teammates to have them come in behind us after we went to go for the negative score and then us go for the high stake and we ended up getting both. And it has led to so many different matches wins this I mean, this season, it's made a huge difference. Um, it's just a super, it gives us such an advantage in matches, being able to communicate with our teammates and change our game strategy midway through, instead of having to stick with one, which is how we've seen a lot of big upsets happen throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, I just listening to your communication throughout the match, you can definitely tell like, man, your drivers are super informed uh, through this. So getting that great info definitely made a huge difference for you. I gotta ask you, this is your first signature event that your team has been to uh, ever for things. How's your experience been so far coming to a signature event? It's been great. I mean, it's just honestly insane. I've never, like, this is so much cooler than like just a regular local event. Yeah. Uh, it's not quite on the level of worlds, but it is definitely cool being able to see teams from out of the state and compete with some different competition than we normally see. Especially here at the Northeast Wisconsin, you're at Lambeau Field, right? Could you really yeah. ask for much of a better venue for something like that? Really cool. Uh, let's pass over to Jack, talk more about some uh, some stuff on this robot, but one of the things I love to hear about, this is definitely one of the best packaged robots and your wire management is fantastic on here. So just walk me through just how uh, you all put this together. And I'd also love to hear maybe advice you have for other teams who want to do such a great job in their packaging wire management. Yeah, so um, for starting off with the wire management, um, a lot of the times we try and like hide it in C-channel. So as soon as we can, we get it like in behind the C-channel of our frame because it means it's not getting in the way of other things. Um, it just looks a lot better. Um, and it just means that, um, it just makes it easier to find things in the robot and get to things and unscrew things or add things on. So having the wires just tucked away behind the C-channel in places that it's not getting in the way is just super helpful for that. Um, with the pneumatics, um, a lot of the times we try and get the um, end of the solenoid as close to the um, as close to the piston or wherever it's acting as as in as little space as possible to waste the least amount of air. Um, and so just getting everything tucked behind with the wires makes it easier to get those in after the fact, um, and then get those really close so you don't waste a lot of air. And then you can also um, you can have those also really compact because you don't have to worry about trying to get wires in the mix too. So doing the wires as you go is a really helpful way to do that. Um, yeah. 
And has it been uh, like this throughout the entire season for you, or is this in this final iteration? Is it kind of this nice package machine? Um, it's really been in this last robot. We've start, really started doing this because um, with the last robot that we had, um, the wires were uh, a mess, and there was a sort of a rat nest in there, um, and it made it really hard to get things in there because we were trying to add tracking wheels. Um, and we just couldn't even get anything in there. We had to take all of the wires out to put them back in, or to put them in the first place. I think there's a factor of just being proud of your robot as well, too, a lot yeah. of times. And just, you know, when judges come up and stuff, you just kind of have that little better presentation to give them as well. I do want to ask you, we were talking earlier, that uh, your team was actually looking at trying to do a Tier 3 climb uh, as well. And as, as early as, uh, or as late as last Sunday, you were still trying to attempt that. Can you just tell, talk to me a little bit more about what you tried to do, maybe what didn't quite work out for you, and then if you have any future plans to maybe try to implement it? Um, so I'll just start with uh, what we started. We started initially trying to mount it to the uh, the wall stake mechanism. But that just wasn't working, um, simply because with the wall stake um, back here, there's not much supporting it side to side. So when you would be pulling down, this would all bend out and it was really bad, or bend in. Um, so that was really bad. So then we started, um, similar to the way 3004A has it um, mounted, there was another bar mounted here. Um, and we got, the, the hang part of that worked really well, and then we had the PTO and the drivetrain. Um, that part really worked really well, but just the really hard part about it was um, getting the passive hooks to engage while also not hitting them on the way up. Um, that was the problem. That was the hurdle that we were getting stuck in. Um, so as you can see, like we still have the um, the passive hook parts on there. Um, we tried to get them as close to the inside of the robot as possible because uh, the further away the ones on the outside had to be, uh, the less strong they were and the more likely they were to bend. Um, but a lot of the weight, we were having problems with getting the weight forward because if the weight's all the way back, the robot would just tip back as it's moving and then it wouldn't be able to pull itself forward. Um, so having the weight, we had our, sol our, our pneumatics tanks up in the front to keep the weight up the front because then it takes less to get it onto there. Um, and so we were having problems with it getting there, so we still need to find a way to get our weight more forward. Now, despite that happening, as we mentioned before, currently you're ranked number two. Uh, so I think it's Overall, probably the right call so far to make, but do you think you'll continue to try to get a higher tier climb, especially with the rule changes as well, too? Have you been incentivized to want to continue that? Yes, we, we definitely want to continue it after after the signature event. Um, we still have it together, and we still have our CAD in our notebook, which has been super helpful, um, because having the CAD means we can rebuild it all. Um, we can rebuild We can rebuild the whole thing. Um, we can put it back on, because we know exactly which holes in the C channel that was in. Um, and we still have it built and all the stuff like that. So we're gonna definitely try moving the weight forward in the future um, and try and make it faster. We still probably are gonna try and get it under 15 seconds because the Wall State game is still an important part of the game at the end. Um, well, wish you best of luck on trying to get that going as well, too. Uh, Jack, I also want to ask, uh, other Jack here, I ask in regards to uh, some of the sensors you're using. I noticed you do have an odometry pot in there, but just talk to me about like uh, a sensor overview of your robot and what you have. Um, yeah, so on the bottom of our robot, um, we have a horizontal um, odometry pod, and what that allows us to do is um, track the position, especially with using all omnis, um, which is better for driver control. Um, having the um, odometry pod there helps us um, avoid um, like when we slide sideways, we can account for that. Um, we use the internal motor encoders as the forward tracking wheel for odometry um, to save space. That was one thing coming off of a tier three hang. We couldn't fit one in the back here. And so um, we ended up not having to add one. Um, but if we had more time, we would definitely add one just to give us that extra consistency. Um, we are moving up um, on the back here, we have the inertial sensor to track rotation instead of a third tracking wheel. But then we also have two distance sensors um, that allow us to reset the odometry. So what they do is they calculate the difference between the two um, distances um, when facing a wall. And then we're able to turn so that we know that we're perpendicular to that wall. And then we can reset its uh, position based on the average of the two, um, which is the distance from the wall. And that allows us to reset each of its, um, like, the each X and Y position um, in odometry during our run. Um, that's primarily in skills, and that allows us to ensure that once we do a part, even if we mess up in that, we reset, and then we know where we are again, and we can keep going uh, perfectly. Um, on the top, on our Lady Brown, we have a rotation sensor. Um, we use um, PID um, and macros with that. 
um, so it automatically goes between the uh, stow um, height, the load height, and then the score height, and that allows us to just be just a button press up instead of having to manually guide it up, manually guide it over. It's just so much easier in matches, especially with the 30 seconds. Uh, we'll change, there's a lot more wall stakes play, and it's very important to be able to do that quickly. Um, in here, we also have um, a color sensor and a distance sensor um, for color sorting uh, the rings, and that allows us to um, detect when, if we're red, if a blue ring comes through. Uh, we briefly like reverse the intake when it's right here, so then the ring flies backwards instead of downwards onto the mobile goal. That gives us our speed um, to be able to claim a corner right as soon as possible, which is one of our biggest, uh, one of the biggest ways to score points. And once we have that, then then we can just. Rock and Sock and Rollouts, by the way. Uh, congratulations on a great performance here so far. We, of course, wish you best of luck throughout the rest of the competition here. And hope you do get that Tier 3 climb uh, going as well. That'd be phenomenal to see. So we'll definitely check back in with you uh, should you get that going. But a lot of great stuff. Still to learn uh, for the wire management and package as well, too. A lot of great stuff that I think teams can be inspired by. So best of luck here. Good luck. And thanks a lot for taking the time. We appreciate it. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.